Hello everyone, welcome to this series on literary terms and theories. And in this video, we are going to discuss the term alliterative words. Introduction Alliterative words is a distinctive feature of Germanic prosody, playing a foundational role in the poetry of early English literature, characterized by the repetition of consonant sounds at the beginning of words. Alliterative meter became a crucial element of Old English verse. This video explores the evolution of alliterative verse from its origins in Old English through its transformations in Middle English, its decline in the Tudor period, its revival in the 19th century, and its continued presence in modern poetry. Alliterative verse in Old English Alliterative meter was fundamental aspect of Old English prosody with nearly all Old English verse employing heavy alliteration. The structure typically involved two or three stressed syllables in each line alliterating, creating a rhythmic and musical quality. An exemplary illustration of this can be seen in the epic poem Beowulf from the 9th century. Beowulf employs the traditional use of alliteration which helped to bind the verse together and enhance its oral recitation. Evolution of Alliterative Verse As time progressed, the systematic patterns of alliterative verse began to loosen. By the 14th century, poets were experimenting with variations in alliterative structure. This is evident from William Legland's Pius Plowman. His adherence to strict alliterative patterns is less rigid, indicating a shift in poetic styles and preferences. Alliterative Verse in Middle English During the Middle English period, alliterative verse continued to evolve, adapting to new literary contexts. One of the most renowned examples from this period is Sir Gawain and the Green Knight. While the poem maintains the alliterative tradition, it also incorporates more complex and varied patterns, reflecting the changing tastes of literary innovations of the time. Alliterative Verse in Medieval Mystery Plays Alliterative verse also found a place in the medieval mystery plays, which were religious dramas performed during the 14th and 15th centuries. An example from the York Mystery Plays, The Harrowing of Hell, demonstrates the rough yet powerful use of alliteration. This usage highlights the enduring appeal of alliteration in conveying dramatic and theological themes. Alliteration in Tudor Literature The use of alliteration saw a decline during the 16th century. However, some poets, notably John Skelton, continued to employ alliterative techniques. William Shakespeare also occasionally used alliteration as seen in Sonnet 30. When to the sessions of sweet silent thought I summon up remembrance of things past. Though not as prevalent as in earlier periods, alliteration in Tudor literature served to enhance the poetic texture and emotional resonance. Revival of Alliterative Verse in the 19th Century The 19th century witnessed a revival of alliterative verse, most notably through the works of G. M. Hopkins. Hopkins experimented extensively with alliterative meter, infusing it with his unique rhythmic innovations. An example from his poem Spring captures his experimental style. Nothing is so beautiful as spring. When weeds in wheels shoot long and lovely and lush, Hopkins's revival of alliteration breathed a new life into the form, influencing future generation of poets. 20th Century and Beyond In the 20th century, Ezra Pound made significant contributions to the use of alliterative verse. His 1920 publication, Reposties included a translation of the Old English elegy, The Seafarer, demonstrating his mastery of the form. May I for my own self songs to reckon, journeys jargon, 
How I in harsh days hardship endured oft. Pound's work highlighted the enduring relevance and adaptability of alliterative verse in modern poetry. Modern alliterative verse. Contemporary poets such as Richard Ebenhart, C. Day Lewis, and W. H. Auden have also shown mastery of alliterative verse. C. Day Lewis's Flight to Australia is a distinguished example. Fog first, a wet blanket, a killjoy, the promise of morning's blight. These poets have continued to explore and expand the possibilities of alliterative meter, blending it with modern themes and sensibilities. Conclusion The journey of alliterative verse from its origins and Old English through its various transformations highlights its enduring appeal and versatility. From the epic narratives of Beowulf to the modern experiments of G. M. Hopkins and Ezra Pound, alliterative verse has adapted to changing literary contexts while maintaining its rhythmic and musical core. Its legacy continues to influence contemporary poetry, reflecting the rich and evolving tradition of English literature. So this was the discussion on the term alliterative verse. We will meet in the next video and discuss some other term. Until then, goodbye and thank you.